Kiwa Motors Production Hub in Nakasongola is buzzing with activity. The team is working around the clock to fulfill 28 bus orders comprising a mix of diesel and electric. This production hub will soon be complemented by the plant in Jinja nearing completion. In the body shop, we found skilled workers assembling bus frames focusing on precision and balance. At every stage here, engineers transform detailed blueprints into tangible marvels. It takes us an average of about, right now, three weeks from start to finish of a bus. Yeah, but of course that doesn't mean that you only produce one bus every three weeks, you know. As you've seen, there are many buses online, so three weeks is just the time it takes to produce a bus, but other buses can be produced after those three weeks. This intricate dance between design and reality unfolds before our eyes. Aspect of building a bus, so over and above the precision which you've seen, we have other specifications of the material we use. So for example, the quality or the type of material we use is automotive grade material. So that material, of course, under different heat conditions will not easily bend when you're welding. So the material we have on the market, for example, which they use to make like windows and doors for houses, can easily bend or lose its form when you're doing different operations like what we are doing here, like welding. So we use really that special type of you know steel we also use the special type of welding for example this is what we call mig welding safety is a priority at the manufacturing process advanced technology is used to simulate impacts ensuring buses can withstand accidents each of the buses is produced it is subjected to what we call static and dynamic tests static tests are tests that we conduct while the bus is in one place are all the windows working? Are all the shifters working? Are all buttons working? Are all electricals working? After that, and we are satisfied that the customer will equally be satisfied, we move on to what we call dynamic tests. We have been fortunate that Lower Industries has quite a vast uh, expanse of land and different facilities. Our subject our buses to both real life situations and controlled. The company is driven by the global objective to reduce carbon emissions by 45% by 2030 and achieve net zero emissions by 2050. This commitment is reflected in their plans to install 1,500 electric chargers across East Africa within the next five years. Is to have a series of chargers that are going to be positioned in different parts of the country such so that if someone is on the corridor, maybe from Kampala to Jinja, all the way between Kampala to Jinja, someone has different spots where they can charge their electric car or their electric bus without any worry that maybe they will, they will run out of battery and they have nowhere to charge. So we are going to have a, a number of uh, chargers that are going to be configured and installed in different locations as a pilot. But Kiramotos is not only going to be the only player in the charging infrastructure business because we are interesting other partners the, from the private sector and other uh, technology partners from all over the world to come and partner with us because without the charging systems being uh, sufficient to support the cars on the road, it will be very hard to adopt the electric vehicle technology. So right now we are in a phase where we are testing nine of these uh, uh, fast chargers that are going to be deployed uh, this year and then even next year we shall keep on adding. The story of Kira Motors is one that is still being written, but one that promises to be etched in Uganda's books of history. Sharon Tomdisha, UBC News in Nakasongola.